All right, we're back again. Got a fun show today as I've got another former uh, employee and friend, family member, Brian Roth from St. Louis. Brian, thanks for joining my podcast finally after weeks of begging you to get on here. Yeah, it finally worked out. Thanks for having me. This will be fun. Yeah, no. Well, let's, uh, we had a lot to get into. So just give everyone though a quick background of yourself real quick, where you went to school and then um, your sports journey up until when we met. Sure. So I guess I need to mention my hometown of Chester, Illinois. So I'm very proud of where I grew up uh, in Southern Illinois. Chester is the home of Popeye, Popeye the Sailor Man, Popeye the Cartoon. And many, many don't know that. I'm not sure that, that many of the kids that are probably under 30 years old might not even know of Popeye this day and age. Very true. So, yeah. Uh, it was a, a big cartoon back in the day. And uh, that's the home. The, the creator of Popeye is actually from Chester, Illinois. So that's where Chester gets his name. Of, okay. The home of Popeye. So uh, Chester High School went to Southeast Missouri State. And got my degree in recreation management. And I'm, I'm a huge Red Hawk supporter. Actually, I, I graduated an Indian. And we changed to the Red Hawks in January of 2005. That was a big deal on campus. Um, you know, the whole politically correct deal back then, going from Indians to Red Hawks. And, um, you know, merchandise sales went through the roof when we made the switch. And it was a good time for us. I like the new logo they have. Yeah, it's sharp. Uh, we've actually, they, they have, uh, they created a mascot, Rowdy, and they, they went through a, a, a re, um, they rebranded the mascot. It's still Rowdy the Red Hawk, but they they redid the mascot. They spent about $10,000 on a, a new costume they wow. unveiled last year. So it's actually a really sharp looking, looking mascot. And uh, it's really good for the community. Before when we were the Indians, we didn't have a mascot per se. We just had the name Indians, and then the, the women's teams were the Otakians. So it's, you know, it's nice to have a mascot that you can take to events and, you know, having the community and have a little pride of what's, what's going on around the campus. And it's good that they're the same for, for men's and women's sports now, so. Yeah, it actually works well. So it's, you know, you, you don't got, it's, it's not the Lady Red Hawks. It's everything is just the Red Hawks, so the Southeast Missouri State Red Hawks. Um, you know, it's, we've really, we really built up the booster club where it's the Red Hawks club. And we've been a lot, we've had a ton of members. Um, we raise, you know, millions of dollars every year to support the athletic department, uh, you know, being in a small community where we're a very small mid-major school. So, uh, you know, any, any, uh, amount that we can raise is really good for the department. But, you know, recently we've had a lot of success with, our teams, our football team has won the conference the last couple of years, made the playoffs. Soccer team won the conference last year. Uh, volleyball team won the conference. Softball team won the conference. So we're kind of rocking and rolling right now. It's a good time to be a Red Hawk. Well, I know you're a diehard. So you're there whether they're they're winning or, or losing. So Yeah, and, I, and I've, I've seen my share of, of losses over the years. So, <laughs> so, so recently, it's it's kind of nice to, to go to games and, and you know go home with a winner. I'll tell you what, I never heard of SEMO until i met you so and now it's like well most people you know, haven't now there's you know i've got a, a handful of people that i know um from semo i mean we had with the arena football team bernard quinn sure stud d Great lineman player. he played down at semo big boy uh ryan sweet who was an intern for us and then then worked his way up and worked with me in florida is he um, still with the tampa bay bucks yeah 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 he's he's doing well Good. i talked to him um maybe a month ago um, and then, um, I just had, uh, Richard on my podcast too, who's up with Lehigh Valley. Now he went to SEMO. So, and, and remembers you from back in the day. So sure. He was with the basketball team. Yeah. He yep. managed, real good guy. So what'd you do when you got out of school? Where'd so you from go there, I, Well, I was, I was working for the, the ambush at the time, the St. Louis ambush. We were, we were just finishing up, uh, at the time we didn't know it, but we, we were wrapping up our, our, uh, our tenure at, at the, Enterprise Center back then was the Kiel Center, and uh, Dr. Abel Watma kind of lost his lease, so the team ceased operations in June of, of 2000. That was it. So I was, I did my internship that spring, and then went full time in March. So I was, you know, full time with the team March, April, May, June, and the, you know, unfortunately the, the team ceased operations. I think it was Bill Lorry who had owned the Blues or Kiel Center at the time, and, and didn't want any other professional tenants in the building. So, you know, 
Abe really had no choice but to cease operations. You know, he didn't want to move the team, so that was that was really it. Um, you know, so then I, I I moved to Perryville, Missouri, which is real close to Cape, about a half hour north of Cape Girardeau, and got in back in my field of recreation management. And I was a, dr- a director of leagues and fitness for seven years for the city of Perryville. Okay. They had built a $10 million rec center there in Perryville in, in their city park that has uh, a huge gymnasium. It's got a 400 seat stadium seat theater. They show you know brand new movies. They've got a library. They've got an indoor pool and a big track around the gym. The gym seats about 2,000 people. Um, we, when I was there, we actually had some, some huge high school basketball shootouts that ran, ran a full day. We had seven, eight games. Uh, I remember we started those in 2004 and our first shootout, we had called the Heartland Hoop Fest because it was, all the teams were, were pretty much from the Heartland, Midwest, you know, St. Louis, Southeast Missouri area, Southern Illinois. And we brought in a couple of teams from either Chicago or Memphis. And our first Hoop Fest, we made 800 bucks. Year two, we made 4,000. Year three, we made 8,000. And wow. I left. Nice. So, I, so I where'd, left, you, where'd you end up going and, from there? Yeah, went to Kansas City with the Kansas City Wizards. I was there three years and, and, and worked in sales. And then uh, I had met- Ticket, ticket the sales there? Or? Yeah, it was, it was all ticket sales, but it was strictly with youth soccer. Okay, so, so group, had, was it mainly groups? Yeah, we had a youth soccer department, myself and two other guys, and we called ourselves a triple threat. <laughs> so we, we, we were doing the bulk of the, the group sales for the organization, uh, but we- we grew the, the organization back then. When I started, we maybe had 15 people full time. And when I left in 2010, we were up to 50 or 60. Oh, wow. But when I left, was it was the day after we just beat Manchester United at Arrowhead Stadium in front of 52,000. And I turned my resignation in to, to jump over to the Comets to help start the team there. Uh, I and left the Comets the are time. the indoor soccer. Yep. Yep. So when I left, we were just getting ready to start taking uh, season ticket deposits for the brand new stadium that's at Sporting Kansas City. Keep in mind, they were, we were still the Wizards, and it was the fall of 2010 after the season was over when they changed the name to, to Sporting. So I, I was not there when they Very went through the name change. Uh, I was still in Kansas City, so I, I was well aware of what was going on and knew everything was going to happen. Um, but I was there when they broke ground for the, for the stadium. I was still with the team and, you know, that was about a year and a half, two year project. So, so what made but, you, why'd you want to, why'd you want to get out of MLS and go to indoor soccer? That's a good question. And, and some people still ask me why I made the move <laughs> when, I, when I did, uh, you know, cause we were, cause the wizard, they were just getting ready to take off with the new I was, stadium. I was going to say brand new stadium. I mean, that's yeah. a cake, a cake yep. thing. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time for soccer in Kansas city. Cause we, we just opened up a brand new uh, 12 field outdoor soccer complex. Okay. All the youth teams were going to play at, and they had these huge tournaments. So, you know, soccer was really, really jumping at the time in Kansas city. And we really hadn't seen that, you know, prior to 2010, I think, you know, bringing in Manchester United, which arguably was, you know, one of the greatest sports franchises in the world at that time, and we brought them in and we put 52,000 people at Arrowhead, which is at that time yeah, was the crazy. biggest crowd in Missouri for soccer. So that, that really kind of, you know, catapulted things, you know, for us with the organization. Um, and they've enjoyed tremendous success ever since then. But I, along the way, I had met a gentleman, Brian Bozinski, who owns the Kansas City Soccer Dome. I met him 2008, 2009, and he was You running. met him because you were out there playing or what? Yeah, well, I was I was playing. I was selling to his teams that he coached. Okay. He coached a couple of youth teams that were really good. Had a couple of state youth cup state champions. Um, I got to know him real well, and he was running a a minor league indoor team that played in the um, pre, uh, the Premier Arena Soccer League, the PASL. So I, I told him I was interested in in getting you know the the ambush or indoor soccer back to St. Louis, and you. Know, then he all of a sudden decided he wanted to you know, bring back the Comets. So it worked out to where he just asked me to come work for him and gave me a nice pay raise from what I was making with the Wizards. So uh, I, I knew what was going on and, and I, was, I was happy to make the jump. It was kind of a leap of faith because you know, indoor soccer wasn't 
it's not as huge as what it was in the 80s or 90s. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, it was a risk to go from a major league team, you know, down to a minor league team. Yeah, um, definitely. That's why I ask why. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You know, why? I mean, that's what I would be saying. Sure. But, you know, when I was with the Wizards, I actually went through four different sales bosses, which was kind of tough mentally. Um, you know, everybody had their own philosophy on, on what needed to be done. And, and there really wasn't any room for, for growth. You know, so I couldn't move up the ladder. Um, you know, so the only way I was going to get a chance to have an increase in pay or to, to make it, you know, jump up the ladder in, in the world of sports was to, to take a director of sales with, with the comments. So now I the comments was that was the first you were there from the beginning with the comments. They won. Yep. Okay. I didn't realize that. Yep. Yep. So, you know, Bud, Bud had his investors and I think I was the second person hired Scott Levinson, I think was the first and he's still there now. He, he had, oh, wow. Okay. He, he was there then left and then, then came, came back. back. Yeah. Uh, that I was, I was the second guy hired and, and away we went in 2010. So how'd you guys do those first few years? I mean, we, we did I, well. I thought we did real well. I think we, we averaged between four or 5,000 the three years that, that I, I was there, that the, the the arena they they had they play in seats about fifty five hundred. Love um, the arena. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful arena. Um, you know the one one level. You know the seats are real close. I think the yeah. perfect size for indoor soccer. Yeah, they've they've actually renovated it a little bit. They've added some new uh, HD video boards, both on the side and the end. The suites were always nice too. Suites I mean, they would always nice. give us a suite when we'd go play there, and and the food was outstanding. Oh yeah, we pig <laughs> out in those suites, man. <laughs> that was always fun i you know me i like to eat so absolutely Who so doesn't? so what were so you how many years were you with the comments before i stole you three years so it was 2010 11 then 11 12 and 12 13 then the, the 12 13 season was was probably our best attendance wise we were i think right at 4500 which was you know pretty good at the time um we were doing good financially you know we built a nice brand of course, you know, we, we use the old logo from the 80s. So you, anyone that was probably, you know, 30, 40 years old or over, you know, remembers that logo and, and, you know, they were bringing their kids to the games because they remember how fun it was to go to Comets games back in Kemper Arena, you know, back, back in the 80s and 90s. And, and we kind of played off the history. So, you know, we reestablished the team in, in 2010. But in, in 2013, we actually – made it to the finals and lost to Baltimore in the championship, which, you know, was disappointing, but it was, it was nice to, to play in the championship, you know, when I was, when I was there. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they were always a solid team and had built up. And so you were there in 13 was when they um, lost in the, the championship. So in 2012 is when I announced that I was bringing arena football to St. Charles, you know, St. Louis area. And then, during that time from, I think I announced that early August in 2012. Um, I remember you coming out to, to one of the football games, but the league, um, Chris Economides, who I think you had talked to at one point, and, you know, he was in Florida. He visited my f football team down there. He knew we had football up there, and he was like, hey, let's get a team up there. And then I got connected with – with you pretty yep. quickly <laughs> yep. from uh, from the family arena. They were like, Hey, we have this guy. He's been wanting to, you know, get a team together and yada, yada, yada. And then we connected and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. I mean, damn, it was fun. But I mean, it was, I, I remember back cause I remember I was living in Florida when we started talking. Cause I was like, I always pace when I, um, I'm on the phone. So I'm always walking around and I remember I was outside just uh, talking to you for like probably two hours. <laughs> oh, at least <laughs> you know, I was thinking maybe it. three or four hours of first phone call. <laughs> it was, it was long, but I mean, you know, number one is I've never met anyone with, you know, more passion for the game than you. And so that was number one. And I didn't know this at the time, but you're the best ticket salesperson I've ever worked with. I mean, you're, you. you're just, you're, you're damn good. Appreciate um, the kind words. Yeah. And, um, but I remember like, you know, first I had to get a deal done with the arena and 
that was that was easy because we already had the football thing. So we got the deal done with the arena. The next hard part was getting approved by the league. Sure. I was, you know, obviously the lowest funded owner in, you know, the league. At the time, I had a 1% owner in football, you know, with Shelly Clark. She owned 1% of the team at that time, her and her husband. And it was, it was myself and Leah. And so we applied to the league. I, we, I sent my financials in, my, my tax return, Shelly's, and, you know, there was uh, – back then the franchise fee was like 250 and then it got modified some, but their their yeah. asking price was 250 at the time. And so Well, everything we was up, ran by the, by the USL, so, you know, the standards oh, yeah. were, were not low at all. No, no, and then the, I think the league dues were maybe 50000 or thirty five. I mean, you know, there's a letter of credit. I, I thought it was operated at a very high level of standards. Um, I was just honest with them though. I was like, look, I, I can go in and operate. And I think I'm, I think I'm a good operator. I'm not a money guy. I've never acted like I was. Um, but you know, I mean, they, they needed teams and I hit sure. the right time. They had at the time there was five teams and they're all complaining because they want more teams. Right. So the league was under a lot of pressure to add more teams. So we ended up working out the deal for St. Louis. I was, we weren't allowed to announce it until I think I had to give them like $10,000 or something right. like that before we could have the press conference. <laughs> it was something crazy. Yeah. I think uh, I signed sometime in May, like towards the end of May, maybe mid, mid end of yep. May. I think I'd met at your place. Yep. After, after I moved we there we, at the end of May. I remember, I remember there was a damn tornado. Remember that one ripped through, even hit the arena. Yeah. <laughs> the weekend I moved there. That was scary. Yeah. I was like, damn, this is what happens in St. Louis. Um, I just remember that I think it was April or May when after we spoke for, you know, three or four hours on the phone, like the next week I came in for a game and, and, and met with you on Friday. And it was like a six hour meeting. It was probably the longest meeting I think I've, <laughs> I've ever had ever. Yeah. Well, the one thing I can say I, I think I can do is make decisions quickly. And I mean, you know, I mean, it still wasn't like, you know, within a day, but I mean, you know, we were talking for probably a few months overall. Um, but I think we had our press conference June 18th, maybe. June 18th was it because I moved back from Kansas City on June 12th. So it was a really it was a quick move. So we were, I had Andrew Ross on the podcast a week ago and we kind of talked about, you know, he was my first guy in Florida when we launched the tropics and we worked out of my um, dining room table at that right. point here. I remember we still didn't have an office. So like you, me, Leah, uh, we were searching for office space. We were, you know, trying to do all this stuff um, to launch this team you know, we're selling tickets, we're, our social media, I forget, do you remember how big it was before we had the press conference? Because like, it was, I think we were like number one in the league almost before we even, it was, it was something crazy. Like, I, I think we may, we might've had eight to 10,000 likes on Facebook before the press conference. Does that sound yeah. right? Or 4,000? Yeah. And we had, and we had over 20,000 though, before we ever played. I think so. Yeah. You know, That's in less than right. a year. And so we kind of, you know, I'm, I'm working with you. And, and so I, obviously I'm like, okay, let's, let's bring you in. What would you, I think I started you at director of ticket sales or something, right? Assistant. I believe GM, so. Maybe. Yeah, it was director of ticket sales. Then it was went to eight assistant AD. general manager, then general manager. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was fun. So I'm crazy enough. So, you know, you and I and Leah, it was basically the three of us. So we launched all crazy. Yeah. <laughs> big time well you have to be a little crazy to work in the indoor soccer business yeah you really do. i think in minor league sports in general yeah, i think you're right but okay so we take that okay we are launching a new team in st louis you just moved back i just moved there and then what happens the league is like hey do you think you could do another team <laughs> and my dumb ass is like yeah i think we could <laughs> why not you know, it's like, I was like, you know, I, listen, I look at it this way. It's an opportunity to get in They're They're desperate. 
So I could buy an undervalued franchise, right? And hopefully develop that and flip it. That's how I kind of looked at it. I, we'd build it up and flip it. And, you know, so that, that kind of took a little bit of time away, but um, really money. But I remember, I think we got in our office, what, about August? Or was it July? It was, must have been July. It was shortly after our, our pre, maybe two weeks after the press conference. Yeah. And so, so and I think it took July. a little while to get the furniture and everything. We were yep. maybe on tables, you know, fold yep. up tables for like a month. And then we got um, all that. And I remember like when we got into August, I started getting like, oh my God, man, we're getting like the season is almost here. We have so much expenses. We have so sure. much money. And I think once we hit, you know, I closed that deal with Simmons Bank and I want to say that was the end of August and that was a, a large deal. And then in like a week or two later, we signed the Mercy deal, which was another large right. partnership. And then from then on, it was, the team was rolling. Yeah, and then we, think, had, we had tryouts and did $150,000 in tryouts. <laughs> we had so many people out at tryouts. It was yeah. nuts. I've never... I don't think any team has seen that either since I, I know I haven't seen any. Well, we had 150 that. guys. We had 150 yeah. people. And that was the biggest that I've seen in, in a long time. Maybe ever. that was just one of them though. We had a few and they all did well, not all at 150, but um, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's like, you wish you could kind of just recreate that. And then what do we do? We signed a couple guys out of that. You know, we signed Corey Adamson and I want to say, I think, I think Mike Mesley, Pat McShee, Mes those, yeah, McShee, those three yep. guys. I believe. Yep. Yep. So, you know, and that we, was we, brought, we signed O'Dane and Chad Vandegriff, Mike Roach from, I think the invite tryouts. Yeah. What? And maybe, um, maybe a few others. Corey Dow, I believe was with that group as well. I don't know what you did with the other teams, but I think the one thing that when we first sat down and, and met one of the big plans was we have to be in the community and I don't think any team has ever been in the community like like we had. No, I mean, I we, we, we were everywhere. I, I think mean, we did 200 community events that first that first year. And yeah, it wasn't even a full year. Right. And it wasn't like we were just sending interns to this stuff. No, I matter mean, of fact, we, we announced on June 18th, the very next week, we were at a, a church. Jeff DiMaria, one of our players, his, his parish was camp. having a soccer camp. Huge. So we went we went down to their camp for about for in front of 200 kids. Yeah, no. And it was just, I think, you know, really, every weekend we were someplace Friday, Saturday, it, Sunday. I remember some weekends where we, we, you and I were at multiple events the same day and all weekend. And, but I think that is part of the reason why we had the success. Number one is you were dedicated. Like I was um, emotionally time wise, commitment wise. And, you never, you never complained about, um, you know, working and I, to me, I never felt like it was work cause I was having a good time. No, and no, I thought that we had a good atmosphere in the office and we had a good rapport. So it, it kind of made it where, you know, it was a fun time. We're all working towards a common goal. We wanted to kill it. We wanted to be successful. We wanted to be the best. And, um, I think, I think we did a hell of a job. I remember another, another, quick thing that that was scary was the turf i don't know if you remember so the first year oh yeah so we bought that field from uh game time or whatever yeah over in glenn carbon illinois that yeah was jamie swanner's you know ambush alum jamie swanner's old he ran that place for a number of years yeah and then uh, steamers alum justin mcmillan was i think the general manager of that place so i called him yeah we got we that took a look at it we got that thing and that was kind of our backup. Right. We ended up shipping that to Reading because I think Reading opened the week before we did or, or something. I think they, their home opener was the week before. Right. So uh, we shipped it out there for, for that team, but I bought the turf from uh, Omaha, Omaha, the city yep. of Omaha. And so we had the deal done for like two months but it had to go through like, like two meetings of city council. Right. And so I don't know if you remember, but 
the turf arrived like three days before the game. Yeah. Matter of fact, the opener, the, the day of the opener, we're still drying the center <laughs> table, the paint. We, we had, remember I had to go out and buy all those uh, oh, industrial fans. Yeah. They were oh, like yeah. 500 bucks a piece. Yep. We're still there. <laughs> But we had, we had all these fans to, to just dry this field. And just I just remember, like, how draining it was. Um, because not only that is when we got the field, um, we cleaned it because it had some other logos on it. And right. so it was like a big, big process. Um, but then you come to the, the home opener. You know, we had the turf – Turf has still got fans on it at five o'clock for a seven o'clock game. Right. And it was crazy. You know, we had a huge, huge crowd. And uh, um, then we just kind of killed it that season. I thought we did from a, from a crowd standpoint and yeah, not on the field. <laughs> right. Well, I, and I, you know. I, I thought that, that the one thing that, that we did, you know, and, and no one sees, you know, the fans don't see that the chaos that goes on, you know, behind, behind the curtain, behind the scenes, they have no clue, you know, what goes on to, to put on an event, whether it be, you know, soccer, hockey, basketball, football, a concert, circus, whatever. Um, I call it controlled chaos, but, you know, we, you know, you have, we had some new people that, that really hadn't, hadn't done this before. You know, so the only, the only individuals that had ever worked events or games, you know, you, Leah and myself, and that was it. Yeah. Because we had to train, you know, new, new people, new staff. Um, Lots of interns. I thought that our, you know, from a production standpoint, I I thought we were, we were top. I thought we were, it was really. Uh, Well, in the first two games, I I dropped, uh, I don't know, five grand on the pyro stuff, you know, which I thought was cool. I wish, I wish we could have did. Did it every game. Every game, and I wish we could have did the fireworks the way I wanted to. I just wanted it to be like, kind of like I, we talked about it. Those like missiles, sure. like yep. kind of like the Jericho WWE. entrance yep. when he joined WWE. It was just awesome, you know. And that's why we had the countdown at the end, and then yep. um, all that stuff. It was, it was. I just I get goosebumps kind of thinking of the the home opener for the first year. I mean, it was uh, there was so much excitement. But, you know, the, the timing was right in St. Louis because the soccer people here had went through, you know, went through some, a number of teams, obviously, you know, indoor and outdoor. So there was a period, you know, from, from 2006, you know, through we start until we started in 2013 where there wasn't any indoor soccer at all. You had an outdoor team that lasted a year and they folded and that was – supposed to be the big thing because they were joining the the u.s soccer division two league and you know the owner didn't have any money so they they didn't make it through the first year you know you had a women's team that lasted a year and a half yeah. so you know, a lot of bad taste in people's mouths you know then, then, so then there wasn't anything for a couple of years and we came in and you know we announced just after the big game down at bush stadium which was manchester city against chelsea 48,000 and still holds a record at, at, at New Bush Stadium there. Um, matter of fact, I think we had talked about getting flyers out at that game and it wasn't feasible for us to do, but it was, you know, there was, there was some buzz. I think it was that. like right before I moved here or, right. and I think neither of us was there quite yet. Well, now that, that was in May and then right. you know, we, I, I came back in June, we announced, but then I think that August is when Real Madrid came in with Cristiano Ronaldo. They played down at the Dome. I was and cool. Obviously, we were there inside and outside. Had fifty three thousand yeah. people, which which broke the record for crowds in Missouri. Well, I remember so, that. I I don't know. Were you like I went down on the field at like halftime? They introduced. Yes. I don't. Was, was were you down there group. as well? Or I think no. It was you and Daryl and Jim Leaker from the Hall okay. of Fame and some other guys. There was maybe twenty people. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of that was cool. Um, yeah. I thought we got a. I think a lot of that is is due to you. We got a lot of. Um, respect or we just people included us in a lot i felt like we were relevant we were relevant you know i mean this the st louis blues were very good to us the cardinals were great hell everybody hates the rams but the rams pretty much let us do (laughs) whatever at i mean they let us set up at all their games yeah um so i mean to kind of see that it's like 
And they didn't charge. That was that was the, no. We didn't pay a dime. We that was real nice. did we ever pay a dime for any event? We I don't did. think so. Not at all. I'm I I'm thinking if we did the one, it would have been the county fair. I think you're right. I, I think they fair. were the only one, and I said, you know what? Let's try it. But I mean, the thing was, most people were so excited to try to help us. And that's right. what we needed. I mean, we needed that army of people, um, you know, to okay. help us. We had a great relationship with all the clubs in town, and they really pushed it out. You know, the, the St. Louis Youth Soccer Association, the St. Charles County Soccer Association. You know, we had the, the CYC, the Catholic parishes, and all that. So, Well, we I really think servicing had, them great, and great building fun. relationships. I mean, you've got some great relationships with those people. And some of them you had and some of them were new for you. But I think the key was we – I thought we did a good job taking care of those people. I thought we did a good job taking care of our partners, um, our ticket people. I mean, we had some loyal, loyal supporters in that community. It was – bizarre yeah I, I think so I, I i think we had you know just a ton of people that were just starved you know for a team of their own um you know whether they lived in Arnold, missouri or if they lived you know one mile from family arena people just wanted to come to the games so i think we did a great job with you know just being in the community and, and really being relevant you know at, at all the events and, and people knew you know who we were Unfortunately, you know, we didn't we didn't do well on the field that that first year. Um, well, and to be honest, I mean, that's expected us to, to to win a ton of games. We were very that's, we were we were in, in a lot of games. We just just didn't finish. I mean, a lot of that is just you know having a a lower budgeted team like we sure. did. You know, I mean, I'm not uh, I don't have the 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 bankroll like Baltimore and even Kansas City did at that time. And so, what I always was like. I learned this from uh, earlier mistakes is let's work within our means right. and try to grow and try to be smart. But I know that had to be frustrating for Daryl Duran, our coach who was a legend um, there in St. Louis. And, you know, I mean, the, the deck is stacked against us. I mean, there's, sure. but the reality is if we try to compete financially, then we'll be out of business. So, right it was kind of one of those things. And I know, I know how competitive you are. You know how competitive I am. Oh yeah. I think, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you might've seen me lose my, my cool a few times, but well, I, I thought, I thought that, you know, the games were competitive, but we didn't get blown out of a ton of games. We got blown out a few couple, times, yeah. but we lost, you know, one or two games in overtime. And I know, you know, Milwaukee came in and, and we let it half time, let up the three quarters and lost by a point. Yeah. Well, this is back when the, the goals were two and three points each. And we lost, I think, 13 to 12, one game. And, you know, we, we could have beat KC two or three times. We didn't, you know, so we could have finished with maybe, you know, eight wins that first year and we ended up with four. But, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, with Daryl, you know, he was so used to, you know, back in the 90s when Dr. Watma was the team, you know, it was, it was almost an open checkbook for Daryl to go out and sign, you know, whoever he wanted. Of course, you know, Abe wanted to win. Abe, you know, is a very wealthy <laughs> individual. So if, if there were players that were available, you know, he told Daryl, say, hey, you know, what is it going to take to win? Let's let's go out and sign this player or that player and, and whatever we need to do to, to win. You know, and, and Daryl could pretty much, you know, write that check for, you know, whatever it was. And, I, I you know, coming from the Comets, I know what, what they were paying players. And, yeah, I knew it was going to be tough for us. You know, the other thing that's different now than it was in the 80s and 90s, there's no expansion draft. No, it's all well, we free agent signings. <laughs> you know, I remember I think Daryl had, you know, five or six either former players or friends of his that, to evaluate the 150 players we had at tryouts and see, you know, can we can we bring back, you know, 10, 12 guys to invite tryouts and, and pick some guys from here to make it work. You know, that's that's where you, you found a guy like, you know, Odin Sinclair, who ended up being the, the league. Rookie of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Corey Adams is still playing in the league. I, I think he's one of our, the smartest players on, on the Ambush think, roster. Might, I, think he'd be a, I think he'd be a great head coach, to be honest yeah, with you. I think, so. I, think, I think Corey would be. You look at Chad Vandegrift. Now he's an everyday starter for the Milwaukee Wave, one of their yeah. mainstays in the backfield for the Wave. Won a championship last year. Yep. 
Oh, it's funny no. to look back. I, I kind of look like this past year, obviously I was with Orlando and it's like, you start looking around and it's like, you know, these players, they, you got, you got players that have played for you or with you all over the league. So every, every week or every game, it's like, Hey, you know, you right. started with me, you know, we started together yeah. or whatever. And it's kind of a cool little camaraderie and just like family um, throughout the league, which is cool. You know, we, and we brought in, I think the second year towards the tail and we brought in, you know, Gordy Gerson, who was the rookie of the year. So rookie back in the back year, years, we had, yep. we had rookie of the year on, on the team. And I think Gordy scored, you know, 30, 40, 50 goals, whatever that those, you know, two years he, he played in, in St. Louis. And, you know, and he was pretty much the face of our franchise at the time. You know, he was doing all the player appearances and the kids loved him and, and, you know, just didn't work out. He ended up leaving and, you know, whatever. I think, it's, we, I think whoever I make the face of the team is, uh, gets traded. So yeah, that's it. it's like, <laughs> you don't want that, I guess. Like, no. you don't want to be the face of the team. Well, we brought in, you know, Andre Hain got his start, you know, here. And, yeah. and uh, you know, he, he's in Milwaukee now and, and a fine player. Victor France is in Baltimore now. He started with us. Yeah. Yeah. How so, um, difficult was it working with me every day? Oh, well, it was, I, actually, mean, I had a blast, to be honest. Yeah. I really did. And I think it's because we we were on the same page. Yeah. You know, we, we both wanted to be successful. We wanted the team to be successful. You know, we knew we had to sell sponsorships and tickets and that's, you know, we just got the job done. Yeah. It was fun, man. I look back, that was, uh, you know, my crazy times. It was fun. A lot of fun. Oh, cr total, total craziness. But I do, um, that is my biggest regret in business is, selling st louis that is my if i could take one thing back selling the ambush that that yeah. is the one thing i just you know i was at a point where i was like i just i want to be in florida and you know i just th that was my mindset and you know i've i've got some great friendships there i yeah you know i consider you family you know and the area is nice. I mean, the weather sucks how it's like 80 degrees and then 20 minutes later, it's like snowing, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the way it is here. Uh, but besides that, I mean, you know, we really like, Winters are hot and humid winters are cold. Yeah. We, we like the area. So that, that's my biggest um, regret, you know, going in there. What was kind of your, you know, favorite time during that, uh, during my era there, any, Ooh. any special, Anything stick out that uh, is one of your well, obviously, you know, getting getting everything started. I think was you know you sit back and, and think what we're doing here is like holy cow, you know, help start the comments in Kansas City, and then now I'm just kind of living the dream of of bringing it back starting, home, starting the franchise here because you know I hadn't touched on this earlier, but when I was in Kansas City, you know, my whole goal was to try to bring indoor soccer back to St. Louis. You know, I, I'd been in contact with Daryl ever since I, I moved to KC in, in 2007. I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to work on this and, and, you know, let's, let's start talking to some people and see if we can find some investors. You know, and we, we talked to Jim Cavanaugh. We talked to Dave Peacock, who at the time was the, uh, the president of Anheuser Bush before InBev came in. Um, you know, luckily my mom teaches his kids piano lessons. So I had a nice, a nice contact there. Um, and that's how we got the deal with, with Schnooks. He's with Schnooks now. That's how we got the deal done the last couple of years with Schnooks. All relationships, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so it's, you know, we had some investors in, in 2013. I had met Dr. Steve Tilley from Perryville, Missouri. When I was there, I met him. I knew he was, he had the financial wherewithal to, to you know, put things together. And, you know, in January of 13, he had two other investors. And we were all set to go. They they flew out. They had a one of his buddies had a, a private jet, and they flew from St. Louis to KC and watched one of our games. And you know, Daryl came out with them, and they had a blast. And they met with Bud and, and some of the other guys in the team, and and they were all set to go. Then about a month later, the one guy got cold feet, and everything was done. And then about <laughs> two days later, you called me, and we spoke for four hours, and a week later met for six hours, and and then. You know, the rest was history. But yeah, I, I talked think to Tilly too, you know, because I, you know, I was open to bring on other people and it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to do it. A lot of people that, you know, you know, say this or that. It's yep. 
hard to pull the trigger because <laughs> it's a tough business, man. I mean, it is a tough, tough business. And I don't think people understand, you know, how tough it really is. I mean, you're not dealing with, you know, two or $3,000 here. Yep. You know, it's hundreds really literally like, like you mentioned before, I think the, the league fee was, was two fifty to get started. I think in the, yeah. the, the yearly dues were 50 grand. I mean, that's not exactly pocket change for, Oh, and I'd say our, I'd, I'd say probably in the league back then, the average budget was maybe a million, a million two. Probably so. You know, I know, I think we Milwaukee was up over two. And yeah, we were, we were definitely. Um, but I don't want to get into finances, but, but the, our first year might have been, well, it was, I know that the old steamers turned a profit, I think, two or three different years, but it wasn't six figures. We did that. Oh, yeah. Our first year, like I said, I don't know. It's up to you if you want to get into the finances, but. Well, no, we, I mean, it was it, it was definitely well a, few, a few hundred in the positive. The, the yeah. downside is our 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 parent company, um, our holding company owned other teams and sure. they didn't do good. So, you know, we, we threw a lot of good money at bad with those. But, you know, that's why, you know, in year two, it was, hey, the leagues, their two leagues wanted to merge. Um, the great thing was it got me out of my contract in Pennsylvania, so we could just drop that team. I mean, that was a half million dollar loser um, just because we didn't have we didn't have people running it, you know. I mean, I we were funding it, but I wasn't running the team. Right. Um, you know, we didn't have the right people there. So it just it was from my standpoint, it was great um, to be able to get out of that and you know, the USL didn't have to hold us in there for three years. And, you know, we had some new teams come in the MASL. Um, but I missed the, the, the MISL when the USL ran it, man, they were tough, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. know. I think I told you a few times, like how much I got fined for sure. bashing oh, yeah. the officials and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they would get me, man. It was like five grand, I think for the year yeah. and fines. Yeah. And I, I talked to friends about, about that, that part um, you know, when the USL had, had the league, you know, so everything was under the USL umbrella and, and how strict they were with their rules and fines and this and that. But, you know, I think it was for the better of the league. And I actually wish that the USL still ran the league just because it's, you know, the standard quality. So oh, it's, you know, you, you weed out everything. It's, it's not good. If, if, if owners can't handle it, you know, they, they shouldn't be there, but it's, you know, and if it, if it may, if it means the league now needs to trim down to eight teams, ten teams, where you have ten solid owners as opposed to seventeen teams and maybe some owners that, that can't make it. Yeah, like so Orlando. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's just it feels watered down compared to that USL year. I yeah, mean, would you agree? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just not it's just not what it is. It's still great. It's such a great game. Well, the pro there's nothing wrong with the product. I think that the no. product is, is is still fantastic. I think the product of indoor soccer has been great, you know, since it started in 1978 with the, yeah. the original MISL and then the 90s and whatever. You can have different sword systems, but it's still indoor soccer. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's it's extremely exciting. You know, it, even and it's and it may not it might not be for your your purist, your outdoor soccer fan. You know, they might not enjoy it, but I tell you, there's not one person that comes to our game that has never enjoyed it. They've everyone's had a good time. It's it's getting them to come back, yeah, you know, time and time again. You get a lot of folks that come out to one one game a year, but yeah, you know, I always say, you know, if, if you come out once and, and enjoy it, you'll be hooked for life. At least I was. Yeah, no, I think so. How about because we had arena football there too? Sure. And I mean, I was getting to that. that. Was my next when, when you talk about big okay. moments. Um, yeah. But I, I wanted to mention that first year, you know, when we had the alumni night, which oh, was, was awesome. our, our last. It was a Thursday night, too. Thursday night, believe it or not. And we had our drop, our ticket drop was like 5,200 and something, whatever. You know, the entire bottom bowl was, was full. And we had like 75, 80 players come back from the old steamer, storm and ambush. And, um, you know, that was cool. we, didn't, we didn't do too well in the field that game, but, uh, who did we play Milwaukee that game or KC? Kansas City. It was like twenty eight yeah. to six. Yeah, they beat the shit out of us so bad that year. I just I I three you know games what I were hate? Really bad. There was there was three games that were competitive, but three games were really bad. What's their um goal song? Because I hate it when we play there. Uh, Do you remember? Have, baby I like it. Yes. Oh, I just yeah. 
I can't stand going to that arena. And I remember the first time we beat them. It was the day I moved to Florida. Yep. And <laughs> that was our third season. December of but, uh, 2015. That was one of the best uh, moments. Game. But, but yeah. So, that, you know, we wrapped up this, the uh, the ambush season the first year, and then you would go in with the attack. You, you, you changed your the team names from Monsters, which was a great name, a great logo. Yeah, I liked it. A cool concept. Um, you know, to the attack to match. So, so we had two comp- two teams under one company, both teal and black, which I thought was brilliant. I thought it, it, I thought it went well, you know, because we could really cross-promote everything all the time. Sure. Which leads us to the X Bowl. Oh, great which, memory and which, hurtful memory. Yeah, I, I mean, but I thought, you know, from the the day we arrived at the arena, just to set up, I just thought, my gosh, this has got, it's you just had the time. intense feeling from, from 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, you knew it was going to be a big game. You know, huge atmosphere, big crowd. Um, yeah, who was, was the, the rap artist we had that – Murphy Lee. Murphy Lee, yeah. Yeah. Big time halftime show. Big time, yeah. I, You know what? I didn't even I, – I didn't know who the guys were. I mean, I, I'm not – I mean, I'm horrible with names as it is, but you know who was at that game because of Murphy Lee? That was a fan that later become an employee. Our suite. Okay. Ryan. Yep. Yeah, he go. said he said he came out, and I, uh, I think we brought him on as an intern the next year. Yeah, he did sales might for have it. Be. Right, he started out as an intern, and then I don't remember what it might have been the following year. But yeah, I mean that was a great crowd, great game. Like that's what you want it to be, and yeah, you want that when, every game. <laughs> when we fumble the ball at the one yard line, goal line, um, yeah, going in for the final score to take the lead I, do you remember i don't know if i was oh, you you well, were you announcing that or no so we had that Kenny was Kenny? okay Kenny Nolling was was doing it uh, this kind of a kind of a bad a bad uh memory. did he leave that game didn't he? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> because yeah, i threw water on the ref or something yeah it got to be it got really ugly on the field there were some some penalties and some calls that, that didn't go our way uh you know we were trailing and and you know just wasn't looking real good for us at the time and uh yeah you kind of got the old uh gatorade that was kind of my go to <laughs> so that happens so then our pa announcer takes off he's done drops the mic he leaves i, I think dj Heard was upset because we he didn't come to the banquet the night before which I think so. was maybe an oversight or something right. i mean it wouldn't have been intentional but right but anyway, that's what he, i had heard he, he ended up leaving, and I think I think. Did Matt you Bird, end up taking over, or who did? Not that game. I did it the next year, but I think okay. DJ Prue might have might have filled, finished the rest of the way. I think maybe someone else upstairs. Okay. Um, David Salmon maybe did it. I, I don't really know, to be honest. I don't remember. It was so chaotic, and I remember at the end of the game, it's like we bought um, like champagne and yep. stuff like that for the teams. Mercy was going to so, buy the rings for us. Oh, I know. I was so pissed. Well, going we in, lost you know, that. We hadn't lost a game, you know. We were, we were, we beat them twice that year. Yep. You know, and so we hit the, the last. We didn't, we didn't play well in that game. I, I don't know what happened. We didn't play well. You know they what it was? Really well. We got cocky. I think you so. remember they, the players were like, we want the black uniforms. Oh, yeah. And so, like, we for one game. special black ordered uniform. the uniforms for that one game. And then DHL screwed up. We actually had to have one of our sponsors. Um, who just wanted to help us out, he draw, drove to Cincinnati to DHL to pick up the jerseys and get them there, like, right before the game. I mean, it was – I was just like, guys, it's not worth it. We're so – we're spending so much energy on this. Right. But they wanted to, and they, uh, they, they were just way too cocky, even from the night before at the banquet, just – and got punched in the mouth. Five thousand dollars suits and all that. <laughs> <laughs> we got punched in the mouth, and but I remember the last couple of minutes of the game. We put the champagne in the uh, Lakeland's locker room. Oh, we stopped them on fourth down. We're about to get the ball back. Correct. Take the champagne out of their locker. Yep. 
that's so we did that a few times but it was fun that was probably the last fun time i had with uh arena football the next i mean that year, was that was a great event like i said you know when we we showed up that morning to start preparing for the game yeah you know, i'm just walking around thinking my god you know this is this is just i was you know, intense getting intense you know blood was flowing and and we had a big tailgate party outside yep and huge, huge crowd. And, works and, and you know, we had a lot of tickets out. Um, you know, just you just knew it was going to be a great event. You know, but that, that's what you want for every single game. It was I just remember what, how much it took us to get, you know, that put together. And it was – Oh, my word. To do that for, you know, five, six games for that was, was going to be difficult. Yeah. Um, that was that good. Was, it, was a fun, it was a very fun event, fun game, and it just didn't turn out. We were driving, you know, and, and fumbled, you know, on the, on the one-yard line. I watch that video every now and then, and I'm friends with uh, Mike Mink, the the coach and owner from that team. So the, every time this time of year, I see all the the rehashing on Facebook of <laughs> the yeah. memories. I don't want to see those memories anymore. <laughs> I'll I'll never forget. You know, we we were going through our introductions. You know, we we talked about how how things were going to work because we played their intro video, you know, their music. And the introduction. So, you know, we went through all this, the protocol, whatever. They wouldn't come out of the locker room. When it was time to do introductions, you know, play their intro video and do their introductions, they were having their team prayer and wouldn't wouldn't leave until they were done. Well, they went long and, and they still didn't want to come out. Well, then I think we ended up playing the video. They still weren't out. So, you know, Kenny starts introducing their players and you know, their, their team, they didn't come on the field. They were still in the locker room, and they finally get out, and they, they finally, you know, they were going to go back. And they, that was a huge mess from the start. And they, they just, then they came out and, and kind of steamrolled us to start, and we made a nice comeback and just kind of fell short. Yeah, it's fun. It happens. And then uh, next year was the worst season I had as far as just not I, – I didn't have any fun. I don't think any of us did that second year. I mean, everyone was, you know – on their high horse because we won every game but the championship. They thought they were the baddest thing out there. You know, we always had to deal with with coaches' uh, um, antics, and I love loved them. I mean, you know, great guy. I like him. Just couldn't keep his composure. Yeah, you and made a change midway through the season. Yeah, yeah, it was a road trip. I didn't see well, it coming. Well, we were we 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 were playing – my friend Lamonte Coleman's team in Marion, Ohio, and we were on the road. And after the game, coaches screaming at one of our players, kind of on the field in front of kids and fans. And I told him to chill out. And so he started yelling at me. And uh, yeah, you don't so we, do that. No, no, that. no, no, don't do that. Right? <laughs> Come on. Uh, so the next day, I called him into the office. It was like a Sunday. We got back from from Ohio, and I was like. Can't have it, man. I've already told you a few times. And then I think we put Pat Pimmel in there for right. to finish like us Pat. out. And yeah, Pat. I like Chris guy. too. Yeah, Chris yeah. Did. No, Chris was I, I, I wish it would have ended differently because I like Chris. I mean, Chris played for me down in Florida and then bringing him up here to be the head coach. He was passionate. He was he's what you want if he just had that um that little bit of control, you know. Um would have been would have been probably perfect right so but great teacher great coach um and at that point i just wasn't having fun it was like a dread every week it was like uh i just want the season to be over and i think probably midway through or early maybe even two three games in i i lee and i talked about it. i was like i'm not i probably told you i was like this is the last year <laughs> let's yeah, just we knew you were done with it at that time you know, let's just focus on the ambush. Let's let's continue to build that. Um, at that point, we were also looking to bring the USL. And so Tony Glavin and I were working right. on that for probably a good six months to a year. And we just – we didn't – we couldn't make it happen. And the other guys ended up getting the team there. Right. But, um, yeah, it was fun. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun up there. Um, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and it's just – to be honest, I mean, it's just to look at it now. It's just it's it's like it's not the same team 
like organization. And it's like, no, it's totally those, different. those first, day. really, I mean, the first, even the third year, it felt a lot different. And obviously I didn't own it after the third year, so it's going to feel different for me, but it just, the passion all around didn't see, seem like it was quite there as much. And you see the attendance dropping and the, um, you know, the partnerships dropping and you got, you know, the outdoor team, um, doing well, you got MLS, you know, um, starting to heat up in St. Louis. And I think it took away some of the, the excitement from, you know, the ambush. And then I think the year after I sold it, the team won one game. One game. That was, that and was... What, oh, it sucked because the one game was against me in right. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> when and it was in St. Louis, we were winning five, two and a half. I we were, we were dominating that yeah. game. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is good. And then, <laughs> and then what do you know? We totally suck the second half and you guys just, yeah, I'm not sure. Us. I'll never forget, man. The fans in St. Louis just were roasting me. Yeah. I mean, people were coming up like, putting their scarves in my face and taking selfies. <laughs> yep. You know, you're one super fan there. What's his name? Who's in the front? The King. Oh, Danny Mako. Yeah. Danny did. Yep. And, um, you know, I had, uh, I had some, I had, uh, uh, what's his name? Damn it. From Simmons. Eric, Eric from Simmons Eric bank. Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. He came yep. out and all that stuff. All right. Let's talk about, um, the office ambush team on Wednesday nights oh at Veda. <laughs> now, have you had that much fun since? Well, uh, well, I, I can say yes, because our team now wins. <laughs> <laughs> but are they a bunch of thugs Whoa. like we were? I mean, we, so we have a, we put together our office team to play rec indoor soccer at Veda. Well, let, let's, let's clarify that. So it, it was, it was a couple of us from the office and then some friends of office staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we start. We had to get creative. We had interns, staff, yeah, some sponsors, and then we started getting some ringers, like some actual oh, yeah. ambush players. Uh, Jay Knoll, though, uh, from the yeah, Arena Football Jay team. Yeah, Chris McKinney played with us. You know, yeah, he McKinney played one half played. Of head. Well, he thought the game was over. He played one half of soccer. He thought the game was over. <laughs> we had uh, White Lightning, Lloyd. Oh, Lloyd played. Yeah, yeah, he played some games too. So what was what was what did everyone understand my role was? Just to put the ball in the back of the net. You can you know, play no defense. And I don't <laughs> you know, the box and just and just be the, the the target, the goal scorer. Just get the ball to Haynes and he'll score. Right, and Every game. that's what I like playing game. with um, hat trick Haynes. That's why I like playing with people that I'm either paying or they're <laughs> they're part yeah. of the team because I got a lot of passes. Absolutely. So it was fun, but I mean, we did have Probably a thug in the. Uh, I guess we, we we should talk about one of our final games. I guess that we had we had a couple season ticket holders that that played <laughs> with us. Nichols, Maddie Matt Z, Garner, and then our equipment manager Jason Polarski. Well, Jason was was playing goal, and I, I think Jason had played a goalkeeper in hockey or goaltender in hockey. Okay. So he thinks he's going to play, you know, goalkeeper. You know, for us, you know, yep. play it the same way, or whatever. Well, you know, he was having a rough night. Well. You know, little Matt Zona wasn't going to stand for that, so he, you know, he gets mouthy, and then Jason gets mouthy, and those two are going to go at it. So, it, I think he had both teams were just lying on the floor laughing. It was what a night that was. It was the funniest thing because there, I remember Matt Z just yeah, screaming. One of those guys coordinated, by the way. He's screaming. Yeah, they both are. Yeah, he's Not screaming. Really he's screaming. Stop the ball. Yes. <laughs> Jason throws his goalie gloves at him, and yes. But I don't. I think. My more fun memory was the time that um, somebody pushed Matt Z and Jay Knoll, who's probably six, I don't know, three, four, 260, like, n like nothing but muscle. Right. And he gets in it. Brutal. And they start shoving, and the, guys, the guy goes back to his bench and is still running his mouth to, to Jason Knoll. And... <laughs> The police had to come out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was one of the fun times. He he lowered his shoulder and and knocked that guy. I mean, almost through the boards, not into the boards, through the boards, nearly. 
it's it's funny because we're playing at the lowest possible yeah, yeah. level it's and the like lowest of the low let's, <laughs> let's clarify that the lowest league in st louis indoor soccer <laughs> ever ever but every team wants to fight though <laughs> and then what would be funny is we would sometimes bring out like Corey Adamson or Schmerman, like these, these players on the, the pro ambush team. And I think Gordy played with us as well. Yeah, and so these people would get pissed because we're bringing ringers in. we're at the lowest level. And uh, that now, was always fun. Now, that I, doesn't mean the games weren't competitive. I think everybody in the league is competitive, but everyone's the yeah. same level. I mean, it's. <laughs> but we started out where we couldn't win a game. Right. And I think we had a couple sessions where we were at least in the top two if yeah. not the top team. We might have played for the championship once or twice, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I think we, we never got, got rings, three. though. So No. <laughs> no. But uh, So what do you think? Let's let's you and I start another team somewhere. I would love to. Let's uh, – I, I, I think we should put a second that. team in, in St. Louis and put it downtown where the Blues play and do it up big time. Leah to told awesome. me – I told her I was awesome. going to talk to you about this, and Leah said that if I – start another team she's divorcing me. <laughs> i don't believe her I, I mean do you think she would if i did that it, it's funny you say that because when i when i talked to you know abel watma about getting you know getting back involved he said oh my gosh you know if, if i started indoor soccer again my wife would divorce me you know so <laughs> <laughs> that might be the same situation that you would be in but uh i would love to, to do it again i know i you know what it's tough i I'm working a job for the first time since, you know, really I was a kid almost 19. It's definitely an adjustment. It's an adjustment having a boss. So I can't imagine how bad it was <laughs> for you to deal with me because man, it's rough sometimes. I just don't like not being able to make decisions quickly and continue to move on. But you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't real. It wasn't a huge difference going from, from Bud in Kansas city with the comments, you know, Brian Bozinski, yeah, you because know, because he and I, you know you guys were roughly the same age, I think you know still young and and a lot you know a lot of energy and and wanting to make it successful and you know, both had had you guys have both had businesses other businesses before and you know yeah he has an indoor soccer facility that the Comets practice at and you know they just went through and he spent a ton of money on renovations during this you know COVID nineteen situation which which really sucks um, I can't tell you how much it sucks. Um, oh yeah, but he just reopened his KC Soccer Dome uh, just last night, Monday night. Okay, I and, saw something on the news. Um, on, I fo uh, we're following each other on Twitter, I think. Yeah, and I saw they, he, an article. They, they spent 150 grand on brand new turf, and he put some you know huge like 75 inch you know TV screens in there, and they clean everything up. They've expanded the the entire facility, and and it's it's extremely nice. Yeah, you know, I'm. I would love to get out there just to, to check it out one of these days. Um, you know, our Veta Sports opens up here next Monday, oh, so nice. we'll get back into to playing again at, at Veta, um, you know, which which will be nice. But so getting back to to you know you and Buddy, really, you know, both were very commit. Both guys are extremely committed, right? You know, Bud was committed to to doing the comments and doing it right. When I came here, it was you know just kind of a continuation. You know, cause I could see that you were extremely dedicated to, to doing, doing it right and wanted to be successful. So, you know, there really wasn't a huge difference. Um, you know, both of you guys were, were, you could take it, advice from people or, you know, you'd always ask if, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, how would you do this? How would you do that? You know, some people that I've worked for, it's either their way or the highway and they don't want to take advice. I won't get into yeah. names, but that's, you know, that was, I think, the, the one thing that, you know, when I came to to move, when I moved back from the Comets, you know, you at least, you know, to hear me out and, and you know, if I had an idea and, and presented it to you, you at least work, you know, you at least, you know, hear me out and say, okay, well, how is this going to work? And, you know, what's it going to cost? Is it, you know, what's it going to make us? And you know, how's it going to affect this and that, whatever. If it worked, great. If not, we moved on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I always, I mean, you're much better on the ticketing side than I am. So, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I've learned more from you on ticketing than I could help you with. So um, I think it was really good, um, a good setup. I think we, we did good, but how did you get from like, cause you're just a diehard, I, you know, you are, you have more knowledge of 
indoor soccer than anyone on the planet. So like what, <laughs> like what happened? Like what got you hooked? I know you went to games as a kid, but like, yeah, so it was, what was it? Yep. So it was April 17th of 1982. All right. So I'm, you know, living with my mom and dad in Chester, Illinois and, and Chester is an hour South of St. Louis. And there's no soccer at all in, in Chester or Southern Illinois. I think maybe, an hour south of Chester, Carbondale might have had soccer at the high school level and youth level. But nothing in, in Chester or Randolph County, any, any small town, you know, Illinois, just no soccer at all. So, you know, St. Louis had the steamers. At the time, the steamers were the hottest ticket in, in town. Um, yeah, we they the outdrew game. the blues in the, the, blues, in the early yeah, 80s. A couple of years, yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was, I don't think people now realize, you know, what we actually had back then. Uh, you know, so I'm, you know, seven, eight years old and, and all the games were on, on TV, which, you know, believe it or not, we had cable back then. <laughs> in Chester, and, Illinois? In Chester, Illinois, we had, we had cable. So <laughs> the steamers were televised on KDNL, uh, which was an ABC affiliate, I believe. Um, so we, I was able to watch the games on TV and, you know, and my aunt and uncle who were in St. Louis, they told my mom and dad, say, you know, get, you need to get Brian to, a steamers game it's the hottest thing going it's a family atmosphere he'll love it take him once he'll be hooked for life and i'll be damned you know they were extremely right on that they hit it right on the right on the button because we, we went and it was the steamers against the wichita wings at that time that was like your cardinal cubs your michigan right. Notre dame type you know blues blackhawks type rivalry and you know 17 18 000 people there just packed and people just going crazy and, you know, the steamers went over time and I just, you know, everybody comes away with these little miniature orange and black replica game balls that they were giving out. And, and you know, the introductions with the lights and the steam and, and the ain't no stopping us now, I was, I was just hooked. I thought it was the, the, the most the amazing event I've ever been to. I said you were like seven or eight at the time? Yeah, it was, I think I was eight actually. So. Born in 74, first in 82, yeah, so that was eight. So what, um, so did you end up getting season tickets or so what did you end up doing? No, so we just, we would, we'd go to a couple games a year. And, and, you know, I think by the time I was in, I think by the time I was a senior in high school, it was, it was the storm. They they went from the steamers to the storm. We we actually had season tickets. So I was, you know, I was able to drive myself. So I just, we'd pile in my car and we'd take four or five guys. We, every weekend we'd end up in St. Louis watching, watching the storm play during my high school years. And then, during my college years, it was the ambush, you know, so we'd have, you know, three, four, five guys with us and we'd go to every game. So which game was it that I saw you on like TV with a sign? Like, you yeah. know, you look so pretty that young. that was the, the 1995 NPSL championship series. Okay. On ESPN. Yeah, that was back when the, the league had. Against Harrisburg, right? Yeah. Harrisburg was that the year St. Louis won? Yeah. So that was the year that we won the championship. We swept Harrisburg four games to nothing. So all the games were were televised on ESPN. So I, I knew the, the announcer. So it was, I think it was Ed Vicinic and Art Kramer. So I had the Ed and Art fan club, you know, and make this big sign. Art was was he the St. Louis guy or was he just he, doing it for ESPN? He was he was just doing the ESPN broadcast. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Because he's from St. Louis too, Correct. I think yeah. he said. Okay. Lives in Milwaukee now. Really yep. good guy. Yep. And he's very knowledgeable. He's, he has more knowledge than I do. No way. I, I'm sure he does. I want to create like the jeopardy of indoor soccer <laughs> and see if somebody can beat you. Because, I mean. You're far between. How many games do you have on DVD or on tape or something like that? Hundreds. Hundreds. How often there do you with, watch them? Or with VHS tapes, and I've converted those to, to DVD. Now, now, there's a gentleman in Kansas City, Doc Summers, Sean Darren Doc Summers, He's got thousands, uh, and he's got a lot of old jerseys, but, but I've helped him with his collection, and, and there's been some other help. Why not upload those to YouTube <laughs> so everybody time, can yeah. watch them? Some that would be up, cool. Yeah, we could, I, could, I could get a YouTube channel, I guess, and, and get those uploaded eventually. Yeah, I mean, you had such good footage from the years. It's it's like – and it's – you just know, like, every player. You know, like, it's – like, well, do you the, know that stuff about other sports as well not, or other stuff? Really. Is this not, just... Not really. I, I think the one thing with, with indoor soccer, and I've said it before, the players are so personal, you know, because they're not making millions. You know, you see these big contracts that, that 
baseball, football, hockey guys are making, you know, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million a year, whatever. And, you know, there's no need to, for us to discuss indoor soccer salaries, especially today, but even, even back in, you know, the eighties and nineties, they still weren't making, you know, million dollar contracts, but all the guys are real personal and, and you just being around the guys, you know, being a season ticket holder and, and going to events, you know, chatting with them and, and just keeping close contact with a lot of guys. And I, I text the guys even now, you will, know, we'll, we'll talk to a lot of guys, you know, Ty Keo, Steve Petcher, Daryl, you know, Tony Glavin, slow, you know, slow passed away, but he was one of my all time favorites, but I just, but think there's, the guys, who's the ultimate um, ultimate superhero favorite? for you oh. in indoor soccer. I mean, I know who it is, but. Well, there's, you got to look at different eras. Ah, because, come on. There's only one number one for you. Well, I, I really, I so he's not the only number. So who is in the same level as him? I think that, that Daryl is my all time favorite. I don't think there's seriously Daryl is, is just because I've, I've known him more than anybody else. And I've watched him play over the years. Um, second was Slobo and he, he's passed away. And then third was, is Joe Reininger. I Joe always Joe thought is, Joe Reininger was number one. Joe, he was from the, from the ambush years. I, I thought when, when he came in, uh, he was a rookie, you know, from Collinsville, Illinois. I thought, okay, well, he's, he's just a little north of Chester, Illinois. And you know, he's kind of a kind of a no name, and then right away, you know, he just hit the ground running, and you know, scored a ton of goals. But my, what I liked about Joe is his work ethic on the offensive side and the defensive side. And he played both ways. A lot of guys won't do that, but I thought his work ethic was by far the best I've ever seen. Is that where you got the number twenty one from That's, him? Well, a couple of different reasons. <coughs> Joe wore twenty one, and then. My uncle, Jerry Patzel, who, who passed away recently, wore 21 when he was a pitcher in, in college for SLU Carbondale. Okay. Pitched in the College World Series back in the late 60s. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah. So he wore 21. Joe wore 21. A lot of, a lot of good players have worn 21 over the years. Hector Marinero, who yeah. I think was the all-time leading scorer for, in the NPSL, he wore 21. He's uh, Cleveland, right? Yeah. From Cleveland. So, where are we going to start a team at? What city? What are our top five cities that you and I would start a team? I'll tell you what. I Nashville. I like I like Memphis because I've when we lived in St. Louis, AJ and I. I love the Diet Doc, man. You got to have it. Love it. Got to have Diet Doc. Gets me going. Uh, Forget the Powerade. Forget the Gatorade. (laughs) AJ would do. AJ would do soccer tournaments in Memphis. And so we got a chance to go down there a few times. I know their sports great teams there. Their sports teams don't tend to do too well. I think their soccer team's doing well, but there's an arena just south of Memphis in South Haven, Mississippi. It's literally like right over the 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 line. I think it would be a perfect arena for it. So all right, so we agree on Memphis is, is one. Uh, what was the other one you said? Americans. Yeah, I I think we talked about the different names because I, I think bringing back the old names. Like people love that right now. I mean, even right. like other old brands, like people are buying merchandise of old brands that sure. just are iconic or something that we remember when we were kids. Um, what other markets besides Memphis? You know, I would I would love to see, and it's been done many times, but I would love to see Chicago back in the league just because, you know, from a Midwest standpoint, with Milwaukee, St. Louis, KC, you know, Chicago. Where do you think you play though? Uh, like out where. The Sears Center. I still like I the mean, Sears. It's a good, good arena. I don't know. It's just like it seems like that's the one market that just seems like it's had a million teams, and I, I just don't. That but would scare me. I don't me. think it's had good management there either. Not, yeah. it's not had good ownership or management. Yeah, I mean, but I think, I think you definitely have to have that right mix. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, um, so Chicago, Memphis. I, I would love to see you know Wichita. They've, they've got an M two team. You know, which is a step down. I'd love to see them back in, in the league. That's a cool market. I mean, we yeah. went out there for a couple of our road games when we played against yeah. them. They've got a nice arena too. Seats like 4,500, 4,800. You know, the market that I really like too is um, Atlanta. And oh, it's hot. right now it's hot with soccer. You know, I looked at putting a team there before in Gwinnett County, but the arena was just too expensive. I want to say it was like, 14,000 a game. And I really, I, for this, for this league. No, I mean, I'd probably overpay there, but 
I wouldn't pay over 10,000. Yeah. I mean, hell in St. Louis, we were paying 3,500 right. in our second uh, contract. 3,500 a game. The, we may have one of the best. It, 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 it was the best. I don't know what the deal is now, but the deal I had was 3,500 a game. And it dropped down as our attendance went up. Right. Plus, we got four dollars a car parking, and we it's got a, now. And we got a dollar rebate over. I think twenty three hundred drop count. So you can't really get much better than that. It's a sweetheart deal. And so I when, don't think many teams have that. When I went to Lakeland, I got something close, but not quite that. It was four thousand a game and four dollars a car parking and a per, small percentage in in concessions. But there's an, a, I found a new arena in Atlanta where the G League team plays. It's called College Park. It's right at the airport. And it's 3,500 seats. I'm going to send you some pictures of it. It is like almost perfect. I mean, a little bit smaller than you'd like. I mean, I, I think you really want that five to 5,500. But yes. if you sell out every game at 3,500 or you're getting 3,000 fans a game, that atmosphere is going to be rocking. Sure. And the arena is brand new. The market is hot. I mean, Atlanta, so many kids. I mean, our base in St. Louis was youth soccer. Thousands and thousands of kids play youth soccer in the greater Atlanta area. Right. So now I think yeah, a Friday night United game might MLS be tough. Well. What's that? The, the Atlanta United MLS team did extremely well. Don't they have like the – don't they average the highest in the entire world? 50,000 plus. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, 70. can we get 3,000 fans a game? <laughs> you would think. The other thing I like about Atlanta is corporate partnerships. I mean, you need corporate partnerships to survive as well, and there's tons there. There's right. tons. There's tons of businesses, small and big. So, it's a numbers game the way I look at it. Um, there's other markets. You know, what I, other I, ones? I think that could, could do well. I'd, I'd like to see Philly back in the league. They did well in the 90s when they had the kicks. Yep. Uh, I grew up, uh, I went to Hershey Impact Games. Hershey Impact, sure. Back at the old Hershey Park Arena. But they, they've got a nice new arena there now. I know. I told, I told the owner of the Heat that he should move over there. I oh, mean, yeah, absolutely. When, That's a back, beautiful arena. Back when I was league president for football, we were negotiating with the arena for arena football. And the deal there, it was, it was under 10 grand a game. You know, Carl up there thought it was like, well over 10 and i'm like we had it down under 10 um and if you could do it under 10 that facility you're talking maybe a fifty thousand dollar difference in the in the year right cost wise is that not worth it you're gonna I you're gonna get more fans you're gonna get more sponsors um so the bears the hockey team drew they draw extremely well there unbelievable yeah. they do yeah. really really well so but if not, they should move. If if they can't move there, they should move to uh, what is the Hershey Park Arena? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, right next door. There. It's just yeah. the old school arena, and they, they need they need to get out of, of the State Farm Show. God, it smells like cow shit. <laughs> I mean, it literally. Have you been there? I haven't, but it's. I go it, all the time. That's where I grew up, close to there. That's see, the ambush in the nineties played there. That's where they, they won, won the championship. championship. Yeah, yeah. ninety five, and it's, it hasn't changed. I don't think. No. No, it's it's twenty years later. So, it's, but I think the the same cow shit is still there. <laughs> it might be, but it's, it's you know it's probably great for agricultural, but but not not yeah not a professional not sport. Sports. <laughs> so, so what other move. what uh, other um, what other spots would you think? You know, I, I'd like to to you know get more on the East Coast. You know, your Philly, Pittsburgh, you know Buffalo drew well and. You know, then look back in the Midwest, Cleveland, I think, needs a team. Love to get Cleveland back on board. Cincinnati? I, I went to a Cleveland game back Indy. in 05 or 06 when I lived in Canton, Ohio. Uh, I think it was the Crunch, maybe. Cleveland or Crunch. the yeah, Cleveland Crunch, then went to the Cleveland Force. It was one of them. I don't remember. Yeah. But um, we were at the Convocation Center, Cleveland State. Right. That's where they played. Uh, yeah, you said Cincinnati as well. 12,000-ish. Um, yeah, maybe 10, yep. seven, seven to 10. Um, kind of a, kind of a weird setup because the seats are not, they're a little bit higher than the field. They're not like right on top of the field, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It's still a nice venue. Yeah. Downtown Cincinnati. Area. So what would be your number one? If this is your money we're talking, oh. cause I'm going to make you put money in this time. <laughs> 
Wow, good question. Um, I would probably stay in the Midwest. I, I, I love like the Memphis or Nashville, one of those two cities, I think. Yeah. Or Cleveland would be number three. Yeah. I think Cleveland has a lot of potential. And there's – what's there in the winter in Cleveland besides the football? Well, you got NBA. NBA. Play, the Cleveland and NBA. you got age. I think AHL hockey. Yeah. So, I mean, you got a few things. But, but. You know, the force in the 90s did – in the 80s did well, and the crunch in the 90s did well. I, I think that it's a good market. I would love to – you know, it would be, be good for the Midwest teams here. So, are you ready to invest in a team or what? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's get well, it done. Man, I know you got you got that. We could cash in that retirement. Yeah. And, uh, all the money a, you paid me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we might have ten bucks there. <laughs> all yeah. All all the money would make it indoor soccer. Yeah. How big of a cheap ass was I? <laughs> How many times did you cuss me at night? <laughs> Don't lie. Well, we shouldn't get into that. <laughs> Too many to count. That's for sure. Yeah, I think there was a few times where I just wanted to beat the crap out of you. Like, I Probably. wanted to just take you out Probably back so. and, you know, but that was all good. But then afterwards, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get to work. That would be a good question to ask Daryl, you know, how many times would he go back and just, you know, cuss you right and left? Oh, yeah. He probably he probably still does. Sure he I, does. That was probably one of the toughest decisions as the owner of the ambush is firing Daryl Duran yeah. because – it's really a no win situation for me or the club because we weren't producing nope. and you know, I wasn't expecting a championship, but I think at some point we have to improve and we've improved our roster every year. I thought, right. And I think, well, by, by year three, I, I thought going in, you know, we, we had Gordy was here. He was ready to go. Uh, you know, we brought in Lucas Almeida and he brought in Freddie Mugen. Now, unfortunately, you know, Freddie was, was hurt when he got here. So that was, yeah. you know, that wasn't a, a good situation. And I don't think anyone really no. knew he was, he was hurt when he, when he got here. That, that really. Well, and I think we had visa issues with, uh, was it uh, Haney at that time or. Andre Hain? Yeah, we had something. There was a couple guys that weren't playing at the beginning and um, it made it tough, but it's like, okay, so what do we go, 0-7? Oh, well, I think it was o O'Dane went someplace and, and just got back in the country, like the night before the first game. Maybe his visa was the one that uh, – He went his, back home to Jamaica, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember if that was that year or the, the second year. but One of those two years, he got back in the day before the, the first game. So, Jet lag. but I mean, what do you, what would you have done? So we're going, we're in year three. So give us our records for the first two years. Oh, Lordy. We were, we're four, four and, and okay. Ooh. First year. Rough. Yeah. Year two, eight and 12, right? We were eight and 12. So we, so we okay. improved and, and we, we should have won more games that we should have finished 12 and 12 or yeah, we should we have lost, finished 10 and 10 at least. Yeah. We, we lost a few close ones. So going into year three, you were expect, I, I was expecting we're competing for the playoffs, right? Right. Correct. And so we start off and we start getting beat. I was thinking we were going to go, you know, 12 and eight at, at you know, 11, and nine at the, at the least yeah. a year, just because we, we had won eight games, you know, and, and I thought we had a better team on paper and I thought we were ready to go. And, you know, I, I thought we, we kind of struggled in the goalkeeping year last year. You know, we had Marcelo and I think he had some injuries and, and, you know, Peter we have was, Marcelo and Peter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I thought Peter was probably the better keeper, to be honest. Yeah, you know, Marcelo gave a lot of soft goals, made some great saves, you know, on some very tough shots, but then you know, gave some soft goals. Yeah, you know, was hurt. I think he had some back issues and I think he had some eye, maybe some some side issues. You know, yeah, some it was eye. something with the eyes too. So it wasn't a good situation. You know, so it's um so what were we, oh and seven? I think so. And and then And what were you I mean what what would you it have was, done? We were struggling. I, mean, I was struggling. Just mentally. Did, did I make the right decision? Do you think? Yeah, I, I, I mean. I that's your that's your legend. That is yep. your number one guy. Yep. If you no were doubt. in the situation, you would have asked him to. I probably would have. Maybe one more game to see what. You know, our backs were against the wall too because we our next game was against Milwaukee, I think, and we hadn't beat Milwaukee. Yep. We were going to Kansas City. We didn't beat Kansas City. 
Yeah. And it was, it was definitely tough. And, you know, half the fans were like calling for his head yep. the year before. And then the other half were calling for my head because I fired him. Right. And, you know, I get it. He was pissed and, and, and it wasn't, a, he wasn't apples to apples with the other teams. I mean, some of them he was, I mean, at that point there was more teams and we weren't the, the lowest paying team. Right. Um, I think we were closer to the middle of the pack, but um yeah, it's a tough one. I don't really, I don't regret it because I think it, it needed to happen. I wish it didn't because on a personal level, I really like Daryl. I, you know, I mean, he was great to me and my family. Um, he was great for the club. He helped us out in a lot of areas, but um, I think, I don't know, maybe the dedication wasn't there as much or, you know, like you knew more about every player in the league than our coaching staff at the time. Yeah. You got to do your homework. <laughs> and, and I mean, think about it. How many, how many times did we get together just to watch um, games that weren't even our teams? Sure. I mean, I mean, every, every night we were watching games if they were, they were on. Like I said, so. you, you got to do your homework. You've got to watch games. You got to watch film and know who's who in the league. You got to know what's, you know, who the players are. You know, can we make trades and get this guy, get that guy, whatever the case may be. Um, but again, yeah, you know, I think it was it was tough getting started just because there there's you know, no expansion draft. So it's kind of like, well, here's your team, but you're on your own to find yeah. players. You've got you're granted a franchise. The league gives us a franchise. Now, you know, piece together a you know, twenty four person roster or whatever. Um, you know, and when we're not gonna we're not gonna spend you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars on players were kind of limited. But again, I, I thought some of the players that we had that were rookies were were pretty solid. And, you know, by year two and three were were, you know, pretty good players. And they moved on from there. And look back at that game in year two, um, we had lost, we went to uh, we, Chicago in December over the holidays and lost by a goal and come back the next night at home and demolished San Diego, who had won, you know, 14 league titles, and they were the big dogs coming oh, yeah. in on the other league, and, and they were on a high, and they were going to beat everybody's ass from the, our league because they were beating ass in the PASL. Yeah. They, they were expecting to win. That was, a, that was a good win. I like that. They won 8-3. to three. It's like, where did this team come from? Yeah. I know. It's like we just weren't – we didn't have any consistency. You know, that was the biggest thing. And I, and the big thing, I think, even still to this day, is the team falls apart in the fourth quarter. Yep, we did. You know, like, I always look at, like, a team like Milwaukee, or, uh, yeah, Milwaukee, Baltimore, KC. When the team is down, even by three or four goals in the fourth quarter, they, don't get they are so focused, and they know they can come back. Right. And, I mean, hell, I remember the game I lost my cool with uh, – Rich Grady, the official. Um, Wichita when, game. Wichita game, yep. right? Because we were crushing them. And Eight to four. we ended up getting a bunch of cards in the last, the fourth quarter that I thought shifted the momentum of the game. And then they score like with 0.6 seconds or yep. something ridiculous to tie it. It, to not, take it, it wasn't overtime. 1.6. It was, point, it was 0. 0.6 seconds. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was less than a second left because the scoreboard said zero, right? But it didn't show the decimal, so like the other scoreboard showed the 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 point sides. The scoreboard and, on the side showed the decimal. Yeah, Correct. and I remember losing my shit. That's my uh, I'm a fan video that yep. uh, Kevin did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, we had an eight four lead. That was the, that was a heartbreak. Quarter. Yeah. So what would you have done differently looking back? What 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 should I have done differently? What should should we have done differently as a group, you think? Spend more money for players. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, I think you know, I I think if we had been able to make the playoffs in year 2, year 3, you know, you, you're probably not wanting to sell the team. Cuz our crowds are bigger. I think would have been bigger. Your yeah. name would have been better. I mean, I, I don't I'm so think, damn competitive, man. It it was rough. I, I don't think we did anything 
I don't think we made many mistakes as far as like, you know, marketing because we, we did spend money and we, we did market, we promoted, we were at every event that we could yeah. possibly imagine, you know, so the name was out there those, those three years. Um, you know, we had a decent amount of season ticket holders and our group sales were good. We had a good mascot. Our, our intros were good. Our, I think our, our game night presentation was second to none. I really think our game by presentation was unbelievable. Yeah, no, I think, I think we did. A, I think, I mean, we had a good group of people helping. I think our I webcasts mean, were good. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys did a good job. No, I, I think we just need to buy the team back somehow. Absolutely. Or uh, we just need to start another one and we can just bring, we can um, start putting the band back together. Here we we go. can, get our suite. We can get Kevin. We can get some others and bring back Zach Miller. Have fun with him. Zach Miller. You're <laughs> going to have to babysit him. Hopefully he's, he's grown up a little. I miss Zach. Um, he's loving life now because the, the basketball Billikens are, are really good. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And as cheap as I am, man, when I fired him on the road, I f- dropped him off at the airport with a plane ticket. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That might be the first time that's ever happened in sports history. Yeah, that was interesting. But now there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun times, a lot of good memories. So let's keep, um, let's keep chatting though. Let's, let's let's get this new team off the ground. Any other good uh, stories you want to throw out there real quick before we wrap up? Oh man. Just so many. I know. The, the football game that when when Kenny Nolly left as PA announcer, <laughs> that was that was like just. I'm bizarre. getting calls from Prue on my cell phone. Hey, you got to come up here. You know, Kenny's out here. He just left. He just dropped the mic and left. He got pissed at Andrew and he left. I said, "What do you mean he left?" I said, "He got up, got up and left. Threw the mic down and said he was done." I think you could hear it. You go back and watch the webcast and you could hear him saying, "That's that's it. I'm done with this stuff." <laughs> he probably wasn't as nice as, as that. But he, well, and uh, it was, I mean, come on. I, that wasn't the first time you seen me throw water at a right. ref. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of my staple. I mean, that's, right. that's my signature move. So. Well, I guess, you know, that was, to me, that was one of the, the better, more entertaining, let's, let's call it that. Let's call it entertaining yeah. stories in your three years. Have you ever eaten as good as you ate when I was there? <laughs> Tell me that about health wise but definitely had plenty to eat. <laughs> free food i'm yeah, talking was, like you know it, it seemed I mean, like we had trade for meals how much how food. often in a week do you think you had to buy your own lunch once yeah i was thinking maybe, maybe twice twice I said at least we had trade at least three days a week at least yeah. yeah i think that was one of the benefits um i really like doing that kind of stuff because i think it's just it's a nice little yeah Nice little perk for everybody. And, and then I if, you know, when, when it, the players, nice. when the players did appearances, you could give the players a gift card, and they appreciated that. Because you know, you didn't have a hundred dollar bill to give them for coming out, but you give them a gift card for twenty five, thirty bucks, whatever, and, and they they were pleased or satisfied. Yeah. Well, they kept coming back. Yeah. Gordy always came back. Every game, every every appearance he wanted to do. He was I like a little, he was like a dog coming back for another treat every time. All right. Well, we're going to, we're going to do this again. Cause sure. you know, we only dived into a little bit, but uh, it was kind of fun just reminiscing about some of the, uh, the fun um, and chaotic times in St. Louis. So well, hopefully, thanks. you know, we'll get rid of this, this COVID-19 stuff here and we'll, we'll get the, the league started this year and we can do another, another podcast here in, in a few months. Yeah, no, we definitely will. We'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll podcast us launching a new team. There we go. So it'll be total behind the scenes all the time. Yep. What Brian and Andrew are doing, <laughs> because I'm going to be divorced at that point. If I, you do should, a team, you so. should uh, reach back out to, to Michael Hedelson who owned the, the St. Louis steamers for two years. He's got all kinds of stories. Oh yeah. Yeah. I talked to him a few times too. Yeah. Good guy. Get him so. involved. Yeah. The three of us unstoppable. Will do. <laughs> Thank you again for, for uh, joining me, man. A lot of fun. Appreciate it.